Last Christmas I gave you my heart But the very next day you gave it away This year to save me from tears I'll give it to Captain Craven Hello everybody and welcome to the Christmas special of the Outside Insider podcast here on Philly Sports Network with myself, Liam Jenkins. I told a porky, didn't I? I told a lie. I said that I wouldn't see you until after Christmas, that this would be done, that that was the last show previewing the matchup against the Texans. And basically what happened is I'm a bit of a workaholic if you haven't sussed that out by now. So when I got home from my shift today, all I could think of other than the fact that it was Christmas tomorrow and I still had to buy a lot of presents, was that it is Christmas. It's a pod. I mean, I had to. I had to for the brand. I mean, it's borderline obsession at this point with Philly Sports Network. This is coming up to my fifth year doing this. And do you know what? This podcast has grown so much in the last few months, I would say, like since I've started being a little more sassy with it, a little bit more sarky, a little bit more chatty, that I had to thank you guys for the support. Because to get to 5,000 YouTube subscribers as quickly as we did, I genuinely didn't think we'd do that. That stunned me so much. I'm so, so grateful for your support. So not only do you have a Christmas special of The Outside Insider, but I've written you an Eagles Christmas song. So we'll get to that later. That is the ultra special thing. It won't be put anywhere else. Right, so it's not going to be put on YouTube, it's not going to be, well, I was going to say Apple Music like I'm some kind of certified artist, but it is going to be dreadful. So the only way you can experience such an atrocity is to stick around and listen. Now, if you're new around here, make sure you're hammering that subscribe button. We've got the big red one on YouTube and you've got it on iTunes and Spotify in the description down below. But where do we start with yesterday's game? Now, tell me that wasn't the best game of the season. So from a neutral perspective, just watching every Eagles game and seeing how this season has developed, I wouldn't have expected this team to win 32-30 in a 62-point shootout against the Texans. I mean, that was a remarkable game. From a footballing perspective, from the, uh, I guess, the mindset of someone, just for this instance, who isn't able to watch every single football game. And maybe they chose this one. They'd be blown away. It had everything you could ever want. We had dazzling passes, a four touchdown and 471 yard game from Nick Foles. On defense, they just ran absolutely rampant and really hindered Deshaun Watson. Now they couldn't force him a turnover, unfortunately. I think that it is now their eighth out of their last nine games. They have not turned the ball over. So Houston... Do play keep away quite well. But surprisingly, the run uh, attack was completely obliterated without Lamar Miller in the backfield. I say surprising. I think we all knew that was going to happen. But what was surprising was the final three or four minutes. To see the Eagles lose that lead and then everyone go, oh boy. Oh, Jake Elliott has missed the extra point. Oh, and Doug Peterson went for two earlier on and it didn't work. Which we'll get to that decision because I will stand by that given that the Texans actually missed their extra point. So if you do the math, where the Texans minus one, Eagles plus two, you can do the math and see the difference that makes to a one-score game. But you get to those final few minutes, the Eagles almost flat. You just had this sense of, what, what have they got left? Like, here comes Nick Foles out onto the field, having to drive the entire length of that field, and then gets absolutely clattered absolutely clattered by Jadeveon Clowney. And what really was a clean hit? It was a thunderous hit and one that knocked the wind out of the Eagles quarterback. So Nate Sudfeld then comes in for one play. It's an incomplete pass. It could have been a completion. It was close. It was a, for a good first player, we were expecting a run. The Eagles stayed aggressive. But 11 plays, 72 yards in two minutes. Foles comes back into the game. Huge pass on third and 10 to Zach Ertz. 20-yard gain. Eagles now push into midfield. Then, of course, we had a big Darren Sproles run. And then we just see the Eagles push all the way down into enemy territory. Jay Kelly at 35-yard field goal. As time expires, Eagles win. Now, if you want to talk about a quarterback that's good in fourth-quarter situations, that 
can come up in those big moments, you're looking at, I, I guess, you know, one of the clutch men in the league now. You, you look at Super Bowls, you look at playoffs, it doesn't matter. Foles has been electric when it counts. And it has been a remarkable thing to watch. But the problem that we've got now is that sports radio exists. And we spoke last week about radio in Philadelphia because I didn't understand what the area codes meant. And while I still do now, I think we have to stick to the radio in Philadelphia because it's just better. There are already debates going on over what the Eagles are going to do with Nick Foles next year. And I think after that post-game speech where Foles came straight out and said it, it choked him up a bit, it's a little bit emotional, that that may well have been his last game in Philadelphia as an Eagle. It kind of sparked a lot. And people are asking, well, what is the next chapter for Nick Foles? Where does he go after this? What What is the next? The truth is nobody knows, but it's, again, very difficult to imagine that even if he does go all the way and win the Super Bowl, that he stays in Philadelphia. And the simple reason is there is a very, very hefty cap number above his name. That number is $20 million for a team that is projected the worst, if not one of the worst, cap spaces in the league between now and about 2022. The Eagles can't afford $20 million to pay Nick Foles. Now, I understand the Eagles need an insurance policy, but do you not think that Nick Foles, if somehow the Eagles make the playoffs, if they beat the Rams, they beat the Texans, they beat the Redskins, and into the playoffs they go, do you not think Nick Foles is going to look back and go, I took you to the playoffs last time, I picked up, I ran with it, and I delivered this city its first ever championship. Then, you almost ruin an entire season, I save it. I mean, I dread to think where that will go. Like, imagine if Foles wins a second Super Bowl, just for a second. Just the scenes and the chaos that would create. Back-to-back champions after almost choking the entire season away. And it's all on the shoulders of Nick Foles. A quarterback who would be a free agent. It would be one of the rarest scenarios I've ever seen. But what would happen? Because the Eagles can't afford to bring him back. I don't think they would want to bring him back at this point. I mean, they would love to have him in the building, but Foles is going to know his worth. Like, that's two deep playoff runs, two world championships, a ridiculous legacy. And at a young enough age, 29 years old, where he can still get a good payday. You look at some of the elite talents in this league. I know Aaron Rodgers hasn't been himself this year, but names like Matt Ryan, names like Drew Brees, who can still carve up a defence when asked to. Even Big Ben, to a degree, has got the Steelers into a strong position. Andrew Luck is going to get another massive pet. I'm not comparing Andrew Luck to Nick Foles by any means, but in terms of ages when players are going to get these big-time extensions and that last big deal... If you're a team like New York or Jacksonville and you know that, let's be honest, that this quarterback class coming up isn't great and you have got the world's best backup, if not a starter for most teams in this league, entering free agency, why aren't you going to pay him? You've seen the value of what having a strong backup can do. If you are a team who is insistent on going and getting a young quarterback, maybe a Justin Herbert, maybe a Dwayne Haskins, maybe it's going to be a Will Greer, dare I say it, then why wouldn't you get that ultimate insurance policy? And Foles knows that. Because none of these quarterbacks, in my genuine opinion, having done very limited scouting on them so far, are starter ready. This isn't Baker Mayfield. And I know Sam Darnold is kind of rebounding. I would say you're closer to a Sam Darnold slash Jameis Winston player than you are an Andrew Luck, than you are a Jared Goff, than you are a Carson Wentz. And for a team that's looking to maybe rebuild someone like the Giants with an offense that talented, all it takes is what the Eagles initially wanted to do with Carson Wentz, which is having him sit behind a veteran for a year. That didn't go to plan. Went out to play his rookie year because, shockingly, Sam Bradford was traded. Love of my life. And we ended up, obviously, with where we are today. But from a logical GM perspective, whether you start that rookie or whether you start the veteran, having that QB competition, having that leadership, having that guy to show him the ropes, like a Tyrod Taylor was to Baker Mayfield would be the perfect example, although I'm pretty sure his name is Tyrod at this point. Like That was a really strange series of hard knocks, wasn't it? 
I genuinely feel like Nick Foles knows his worth. And even if the Eagles do crash out, even if they don't make the playoffs, the fact that he's been able to salvage this season, to salvage an offense that was struggling so, so much this year, it has to be noted. Like, There's no way you can just ignore the fact that this Eagles offense has been putrid at times. Absolutely putrid. And out of nowhere, it's just suddenly better. Like, that's just how it happens now. Like, if we're really going to look at, like, a yards per play metric for this season, and you look at where the Eagles stand, 5.68. It's nowhere near as good as it was last year. Nowhere near as good as it was. But if you just look at any metric for this team in the NFL, and how they've struggled, especially on third down, well, under Nick Foles, they went 4 for 4 on fourth down last night. Well, on Sunday, if you listen to this on Monday, Christmas Eve. In the red zone, they ripped the Texans to shreds. That one red zone drive, where there was penalty after penalty, lasted about 18 years. I mean, I grew facial hair, and that doesn't happen because at age 23, I don't think I've hit puberty yet. I mean, maybe in some areas, but others are clearly still, you know. I mean, this is my November now. My voice is still sounding like a teenage girl. We need to work on this. But this Eagles offense before the return of Nick Foles was one that was just running on fumes. It was relying on Zach Ertz. It couldn't establish a run until it was five games too late. And yet here we are. With Foles spreading the ball around to eight receivers in the first half. Putting up 471 yards on... I know it's a badly ranked Texans defense. But it's a very good one at its core. Teams know the value of Foles. Foles, I don't think, as much as we would love him to return, is going to stay in Philly. This Foles versus Wentz debate isn't one. It doesn't exist. It really, really doesn't. And I made the comparison a few weeks ago that Nick Foles was a PlayStation 1, Carson Wentz was like an Xbox 1 or a PlayStation 4, depending where your allegiance lies on that argument. But I think the other way to position this is, imagine you're trying to buy a house. And you're living in an apartment right now where you have spent the last five years of your life. And you've, you know, had some ups and downs there. Maybe you had the best night of your life. Oi, oi, lads. Know what I mean? <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Oh, I can tell it's a Christmas special. Welcome. Um, maybe it's had some special memories for you. But at the end of the day, you can't stay there forever. Because for that price rent, you know, you want to move away. Bigger city, better things. You may be at your best in your current job, but... If you resituate, you get yourself one of those fancy fridges, you know, where you've got the water dispenser in the middle. Someone I know has got one of them, and it blows my mind. Like, that is on a fridge. Like, the water comes out of the fridge into a cup. That is mad. Like, I want one of them for Christmas, please, if someone's listened to this. I mean, actually, bear in mind, after the hard-boiled egg argument, it's probably not a good idea. But you want to move into a two-place apartment. You want to get a space for you and your girlfriend. You want to get rooms maybe to accommodate a kid. Maybe you want to go out and just get an office space. I mean, I would love one. I literally live in Harry Potter's cupboard right now. I love this bedroom. It's seen me through 23 years of my life. But I know at some point I'm going to need something bigger and better. I know that I I need to grow. And we know what Foles is. We know what Foles does. But at some point, the money you're paying for Foles can be invested into something that's going to help your future. To help the growth. To help you sustain your current situation. And you'll get a nice little apartment with a nice view that overlooks a river or maybe a car park, depending where you go. And that's what the Eagles have got in Carson Wentz. And the thing is, they've still got that luxury window of knowing that he is on a rookie deal, that he is a bit cheaper right now. And while an extension can be worked, these injuries are only going to help those negotiations. Meanwhile, someone who wants to move into that apartment... That old rundown worm with the, the band posters on your walls. <laughs> Not like I've got those. No, bring me the horizon or all time low posters in here. Not at all. Someone's going to want that room. Mama Jenko is probably going to put my bedroom on Airbnb and get some lad called Derek. I've got a writer called Derek. Sorry, Derek, if you listen to this. It wasn't aimed at you. Uh, some lad called Derek just going to sleep in it. And she'll charge me a bit more rent because she will need his presence more. She needs that room to be filled more now. 
and falls. I mean, whether that the, that person is the Jaguars, whether it's the Giants, that's going to happen. But absolutely, there is no Wentz and Foles debate. And just while we are on that note as well, can we just please say, I just, I want to say one thing. And I try to stay away from this, like, I put a tweet out the other night saying that I don't want to write an article over the next week saying, Oh, Carson Wentz versus Nick Foles. Here's why the Eagles should keep Foles. Here's why the Eagles should treat Carson Wentz. I saw something today that said the Eagles should trade the, the Eagles should trade Carson Wentz to the Giants for Saquon Barkley and two first round picks. Like, I don't know what crack they are smoking on that radio station. And I was going to say I would want some, but I don't condone the use of hard substances. So we are all very well behaved gentlemen here. I should hope you are as well. <laughs> Just what is going on there? Imagine that. At this point, you, I mean, I understand the logic. The Eagles needed running back. Saquon is incredible and two first round picks. But just the, the fallacy of it is ridiculous. And people are just blowing it up because fans are going to listen. And unfortunately, that's the way that sports media works. And that's why I'm trying so hard to do some different things with this podcast and over at phillysportsnetwork.com. But that is literally like saying I will trade you this bottle of champagne for your 12 crates of beer and maybe a chocolate bar. Do you, I mean, what's going to give you more joy? I mean, the champagne's going to last longer, a bit more firm, it was celebratory. The beer, you're going to put on weight. If you drink all that beer, I didn't realise Bud Light was about 2% and I, I was distraught. I love Bud Light. It's one of my favourite beers, but they're not going to sponsor the show now, are they, after that? I mean, it is like just drinking water. God, un- unreal. We are not trading champagne for water, okay? We have got a lovely bottle of Carver sat there in Carson Wentz. It's been brewing for years. 20 year old now. That's not being traded. Stop. It is ridiculous. I don't understand. And I I can't believe I'm wasting my time talking about it. But I felt like someone's going to come out and say it. But while we're on that note again, I did just want to say that I'd also tweeted something else last night. If you're not following me on Twitter, at Liam Jenkins 21 is the place to go. That it's okay to say Nick Foles is playing very, 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 very well without mentioning the name Carson Wentz. It's also okay to mention the fact that Carson Wentz hasn't played very, very, very well at times without mentioning the name Nick Foles. The two aren't conjoined. Like, they're not put, they're not joined together. You don't need to say Carson Wentz and Nick Foles in the same breath. It's okay. You can say Nick Foles is having a great time for 471 yards. Like, it's, it's not that difficult. It's literally like those people that go on holiday, okay, And they come back to work and they give you that face where they want to talk about their holiday and you know you're going to have to suck it up and listen and you really kind of don't want to hear it at times. You know, we've we've all been in that situation and they'll come back and I'll go, oh, oh, it's cold in here. Isn't it? Isn't it? Is it a bit cold? Is it a bit cold? Not cold in here? A bit bit cold, a bit freezing? Of course, you know, they've been to Egypt for a month. So your response is, no, I'm warm. Why? Oh, it was warmer than this in Egypt. You don't have to make those comments. You just say it's cold. You know, we will talk about your holiday. It's bound to come up because you've been posting on social. I'm not bitter about this at all. Definitely never happens to me. But, you know, it's going to come up in conversation. You go on holiday. I see it on social media. I will ask you, how was your holiday? It looked amazing. And then we will have a chat. You don't need to... Force it down my throat. Like it's, it, you don't need this debate. You do not need Wentz versus Foles in your life, Philadelphia fans. But I'm not going to get fired up. It's Christmas. I'm happy. It's okay. We don't need this frustration. We are here to vent. It is like group therapy. The Eagles push their playoff drive into one more week. There's some other, I mean, a lot of people thought it would be written off by now. Hence the whole ski mask motion that the team have been able to really build on. And they're going to week 17... In a very, very winnable matchup against the Redskins, which has the potential to be a blowout. And then their fate will come down to whatever the Bears really decide they fancy doing against the Vikings. In a way, they get to pick their opponent in the first round of the playoffs. Will it be the Vikings should they lose to them or the Eagles if they win? And if I'm the Bears, I'm kind of seeing Nick Foles and I'm either bricking it or I'm going to be thinking, ha, naive, back up, our defense, win. And obviously for the Eagles, that means they get a playoff berth and at least a chance 
And let's be honest, with Nick Foles at the helm, with this team, a chance is all they ever really needed. And that is enough to spread Christmas joy throughout the year. But there's one thing that won't get discussed. And before we get into thank you next, before we get into the Christmas song, I don't want to keep this very long. I do want to have a nice, short, explosive podcast. Podcast! Dirty-minded, I swear to God, you guys are, are just the worst. Come on, we're better than that here. But I mentioned last week how the Eagles obviously attacked the Rams in a very certain way defensively, where they wanted to eliminate the run game, put it all on the quarterback, and then just force them to throw downfield. Because the minute they've got to let those deep routes envelop and your corners are 10 yards away, you've got a chance. It's man coverage. It's cover three, there is hope, and the linebackers can do their thing and take away the run. They did that again against the the Texans, who were without Lamar Miller. So the Texans were already at a disadvantage because their main running back, who has over 900 yards this season, isn't there anymore. So they're running with Alfred Blue, who averaged around 3.3 yards per carry, I believe. And, well, to put it simply, if we take away the 49 yards that Deshaun Watson got on his own, the Texans had 13 yards of rushing. 13. On 11 attempts. Deshaun Watson threw 40 times. Now obviously Deshaun Watson was a very different cat to Jared Goff. Scrambling around. Making plays happen. Making some ridiculous throws. There was that one that was very Carson Wentz-esque. Which I'm sure we don't need reminding of for Eagles fans. But that was a a monumental game changing throw. That kept this team in the game. And he got sacked four times. (coughs) Bold predictions article. What? Who who said that? What? Not, Not me. 339 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. That should win a game. It didn't because the Eagles' defense played better. They marginalized the offense and Nick Foles showed up. But the thing is, we're all going to focus on Nick Foles. We're all going to focus on the magic and the stars. And the fact that Darren Sproles, bless him, at 9,800 years old, is still running around faster than me and being very good at it as well. I mean, this he's, he's already got 96 yards and a touchdown rushing. Receiving on Sunday, he had a further 76 yards and a touchdown. Sproles has been such a key part of this offense, but that's what's going to catch the attention. It's the historic season for Zach Ertz. It's the breakout of Nelson Aguilar and Olshon Jeffrey. It's the return of Darren Sproles and his Kobe Bryant-esque ride to retirement. It's going to be everything else about this team But the defence, which for two weeks in a row has played out of its mind. Rasul Douglas, Rasul season. You've seen their video of me on Twitter drinking every time Rasul Douglas makes a play. Nine tackles led the team. Cravon LeBlanc, my lord, my sick. Captain Cravon himself broke his finger in the third quarter. Goes to the sideline. Goes, don't worry fam, I got this. Pops it back into place. Goes back out there and finishes the game. Deshaun Hall, okay, Deshaun Hall, who signed with this team two weeks ago, who's in his second season, a former third round pick by the Panthers, Get, is, is more productive than Bruce Hector has been it all year. 0.5 sacks and a QB hit. And the hustle we had on that play to get to the outside and bring Watson down was very impressive. That is Im- that is a strong effort. This defense across the board was just strong. There's no other way to look at it. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins was totally eradicated out of the game until that one drive where he just went god mode. Like It's like he had a, a hack controller on Modern Warfare 2 and he just flew up to the sky and started just throwing rocket launchers around at everyone for fun. I don't know how he does it. Like, in my opinion, he's genuinely the best receiver in the NFL and it's not close because no one... I mean, like, you could compare him to Odell... I I think DeAndre Hopkins gives it every play. Odell will come in bursts. Hopkins will make the same ridiculous catches play after play after play. Odell is a slant guy and then will do one massive play. That's the difference. I know a lot of that's game planning. I think Odell comes with a lot more drama and baggage than DeAndre Hopkins. Of course, you've got Antonio Brown in that discussion as well. But I genuinely feel like Hopkins is the more star-studded receiver. Maybe Brown's more complete, but I mean, just the route running of Hopkins is enough to get your knees weak. I'm not going to lie. And the Eagles shut him down for the majority of that game into the late resurgence. It's the defense that wins championships. 
The defense, let's be honest, it's almost lost championships as well sometimes. But are we really going to stand here and criticize Jim Schwartz for this season after seeing how this defense has rebounded without a secondary, without four of its starters? On the secondary side. Who that have missed linebackers at times. That have missed defensive tackles. Defensive ends. It's ruined. That defense is absolutely ruined. And yeah, there it is. Bigger, badder. More productive than it has been all year. In the biggest games of the season. When it's all on the line. And that to me. Is the biggest takeaway so far. Again, the Nick Foles magic. The Darren Sproles retirement parade. The rest of it is wonderful, and I'm very, you know, grateful for the Eagles fans who get to appreciate that. But don't take away the fact that Jim Schwartz has called two of the best games I've ever seen him call in an Eagles, I'd say uniform, he just wears a hoodie, but two of the best games I've seen him call. And that has to be, a, right, give him a round of applause, have a shot on him for Christmas, I genuinely feel like he it's deserved. Like, that man has been calling some great defensive game plans, been willing to make adjustments when it counts. And talking of adjustments, we are going to go straight into Thank You Next, the penultimate part of today's podcast, where, of course, you guys submit your questions. There's only three of them this time around, but if you want to ask them for next time, it's at Liam Jenkins 21 on Twitter. Thank you. Next at Proto Tyler, will ESPN make a 30 for 30 about Josh Adams' three-week stretch of solid but not spectacular play? And will it be called Back to the Feature, the successor to Eagles legend Frank Gore? Yes and yes, I hope. I don't see why they wouldn't. It has been such a fairy tale. Why not? And I think Josh Adams has got more to offer. I think the injury slowed him down last week. Um, You see the way that Darren Sproles has really impacted this game. I'm a bit worried that Adams only averaged 1.9 yards per carry against the Texans. I think that is a little bit stunning. But to be fair, with Darren Sproles doing the things he's doing, it should really open up Josh Adams to come in and make a bit more of an impact in games moving forward. Thank you. Next, Alec Kostovar, a writer here for Philly Sports Network, says, going into next season, how will the Eagles address Big V on the O-line? I'm sure they'll address him by calling him his first name. There's a start for you. The com- I mean, who was it? Dan Foltz, the commentator? Like, I'll get into that in a moment, Alex. I'm ver- Alec, I'm very sorry for, you know, jumping the gun there. Um, but that really infuriated me, and I'm going to have a bit of a rant about that before we get on to the song later. But how will they actually address him? Uh, I think that... He's probably not going to be the starter at left tackle. The Eagles may well draft someone else or bring in a free agent to jump up. I mean, having said that, Vitae was absolutely ravaged by Jadeveon Clowney all game. But there's been moments where when he's given help, like that game against Minnesota last year in the NFC Championship game where he completely shut down Everson Griffin, he's got the potential there. He's got the frame, he's got the thickness, he's got the technique. I think it's just a mental part of it at this point, and I'm sure that can be coached out with another year of development. Who's to say he won't be a serviceable starter at the NFL level? But at the very least, they will bring in a name behind Halapu Levati Vita. Thank you. Next, would I trust Foles to go to the Superdome and beat the Saints? Depends where his sat-nav's taken him. Um, you know, if he puts a GPS to the wrong direction, then Eagles end up in Arizona. Oh, it could all get kind of messy. But no, genuinely, I think that... Given the the circumstance and everything, that would be the truest shootout we've ever seen. And after the beatdown the Saints put on the Eagles earlier this year, it would be a revenge game and the Eagles would have it circled should it ever come to that. Whether Foles can hang with Drew Brees and that offence is another debate entirely. It's something where I would love to see it. I think it would be an absolutely thrilling encounter. But even, I think, what in my opinion, was one of Drew Brees' best games against the Steelers. It wasn't fantastic statistically. He only had one touchdown, didn't turn the ball over. I think he completed about 60 odd percent of his passes, but he spread that ball around so well. There were like nine different receivers that touched it. Michael Thomas was an absolute god amongst men in that game. But even names like Keith Kirkwood, who on the year, as it's got two touchdowns, I think off the top of my head, like the what, what Drew Brees is doing this season is remarkable. And I think that's not getting enough credit for a man his age to be really just going out there and putting in what could well be his finest season yet. I mean, he's already had 32 touchdowns this year, which is the most since, I think, his 2016 campaign. He's so damn consistent 
that it, it's just terrifying. It really, really is. So I'd be a little bit sceptical of that game. I'd love to see it one more because I think that it would just be hilarious to see how much can foals hang with Breeze. And just hilarity, the fans' reaction. Because there's a lot of distaste between Eagles and Saints fans right now. Because it feels like the Saints are kind of obsessed with the Eagles, as if they're like an ex-girlfriend that's kind of moved on. But kind of trying to, you know, they kind of still love the guy they were with. So they're just trying to shove in their new fancy boyfriend that's got a six-pack and a moped, you know, on Instagram. And they're like, oh, look, he makes me so happy, and he's great, and his name's John, and he's got a tribal tattoo that means he's in some Amazonian tribe on his shoulder, and he's fit. Right? And they're trying to shove that in the boyfriend, the ex-boyfriend's face. And the ex-boyfriend doesn't care. And the girlfriend is really trying to convince herself that, you know, they're the, that's the better option. And that's what the Saints are doing. You know, the ski mask thing, the comments earlier in the year, the comments last year made by, I believe it was Alvin Kamara. It's a bit silly. It's a bit petty. It doesn't need to be done. And as a result, Eagles fans aren't too happy. And I'm sure they would love to see the Eagles slap the Saints out of the playoffs. Could you imagine that? Like, if they actually get the NFC Championship game that was almost happening last year, if it wasn't for that iconic moment that stands out so vividly, it could have been. So if we ever get to that point, I think the Eagles can handle business. I have no qualms in that. It's just the defense, and they've played them once. I think they've learned enough to know that they can't do what they were doing before. They've got a bit more strength now, a bit more swagger. The Saints caught them on what was a very wobbly and vulnerable position. This is an Eagles team playing with confidence. I think they could at least stay within reach. You know, if the spreads, I, I predict around 10 points, I think the Eagles would stay within that spread. Um, whether they win the game, I don't know. But that is the end of Thank You Next for today's podcast. So before we get to the big song, I did just want to take a minute to address the whole Dan Fultz thing. Now, I made a tweet about this. It did kind of blow up a little bit. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But I've had people message it. Like, di- I can't even talk anymore. But direct messaging me today saying that you know, I'm, I'm a snowflake, apparently. I mean, I'd love to be a snowflake. They're so gentle and fr- Oh, I'm a snowflake. I am a snowflake. Uh, but saying that I shouldn't be offended and I shouldn't be upset about the fact that Dan Fultz made a comment about Halapulavati Vitae's name, saying that, oh, I'm going to call him H. Vitae because it's too hard to pronounce. Do you want to pronounce it? I don't want to pronounce it. H. Vitae. Ha ha ha. H for hold. Right? And it was so disrespectful. And I genuinely don't think I'd care in any other situation other than the fact that I used to do sports broadcasting. So before I made Philly Sports Network, I believe if you search Liam Jenkins commentary on YouTube, um, you're going to hear an 18-year-old Liam talking over sports cars. Okay, so I was televised on like, national television. That was my thing before. Loved it. I just felt that you've got to kiss your way up. And industry it wasn't really for me. But there were guys uh, racing sports cars from around the globe. We're talking like Italians, Germans, Swedes, Danes, uh, Greeks. No, no matter what you're looking at, like Egyptians, Americans, it doesn't matter. Um, there were some extremely complicated names. I can assure you there are many more complicated than Halapu Levati Vitae, which is just a combination of consonants that for some people, it just rolls with your tongue a bit awkwardly. That's all. But that's it. It doesn't need to be made into a national joke. The thing is that I would spend hours, and I mean hours, before every damn race with a keynote on my iPad looking at every single driver, where they were born, what their name is, how long have they been racing, what disciplines have they been successful in, how long have they been in this series, what's their average lap time, have they been at this circuit before, and they were like 40 drivers a time, because it meant that much to me, that's my craft, I care about it, I'm passionate, it, again, it's like an obsession, right, I would never, if I can't pronounce a name, make a joke out of it, now I've made some hashes in my time, don't get me wrong, there was a time where Oh, it's so bad. Like, I think it's still on YouTube if you can find the broadcast. But my co-commentator was someone called Charlie Butler Henderson, right? And we were returning from an advertisement break. And I had the producer in my ear going, Right, Liam, 3, 2, 1, live, 3, 2, 1. Right, going really loud. And I was a bit nervous. I was 18 at the time. First ever live television broadcast. I was the lead commentator at 18. I was, you know, shaking quite rapidly. You know, there was a lot of anxiety there. So I'm like... Welcome in everybody, we're back live here at Silverstone with myself, Liam Jenkins, and my co-commentator, Charlie Hender Butlerson. And he just stared at me and started making jokes. And I was like, do you know what though? I tried, that was even a complex name, that was simple. I tried, I made a mistake, you laugh it off, you carry on. 
That's broadcasting. You walk a public tightrope in that industry. That's what you do. I did it several times. There were more complex names where I messed up or I missed letters or I misread it and said it is pronounced differently. But in the NFL, a lot of fans don't know this. Teams send out media kits to every team or every analyst or every broadcaster every week. Okay, so if you're covering a game, you get both teams press pass or press packages right and within that on the roster under every player is a pronunciation guide that tells you how to say the name it takes 10 seconds to read that and it's just respect you don't do in what other world would i go i wouldn't go into a supermarket go to buy like a bottle of toothpaste or they come in bottles now apparently go to the desk and go like oh your name's and oh, i'm just gonna call you a a till assistant, can I buy that please? It's disrespectful. You're on national television. You're a former NFL player. Have some damn respect for your job. Have some damn respect for the fans listening that care about that player, that care about that team, that care about this sport. You're, it's a disservice. It's absolutely disgusting. And I'm kind of tempted to write off to CBS because it has angered me that much. Like, I love sports broadcasting. I would love to be able to be in a position where Philly Sports Network can host, um, you know, sporting events or we can stream a lacrosse game or a hockey game or provide our alternative commentary streams. Because it is something close to me. You can probably hear it in my voice now. And to hear someone so complacent and so not giving a rat's ass about what he sounds like or how it comes across or how ignorant he sounds... Like, his family, like, Vitae's family could be watching that, and it is borderline, I'm saying borderline very, very tightly here, borderline racism. Refusing to say someone's name because it's too complicated on national television because you don't want to and make an idiot of yourself. That sounds pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic, and it's embarrassing, and CBS should be having words. Right, that's off my chest. It's time for the big one. You have been patient all night long. And as I said, you know, I'm I'm very soppy. You've probably guessed that by now with these podcasts where I am so grateful. Like we hit a milestone the other day where we actually had 10,000 total downloads so far. 10,000 of you have downloaded the Outside Insider podcast. That is mental. Like 10,000 of you, 10,000, like that it blows my mind. And... This podcast is so personal to me as well because I'm, I'm putting everything I've got into it every single time. You know, for me, it's not just a case of sitting in front of a microphone, making up a hot take and trying to get a reaction and bringing in an angry caller and laughing at them. It's I want to generate a discussion. I want to have fun and I want to be me. I know Philadelphia Sports Talk Radio is so sensationalist now. I know a lot, a lot of the written content is the same. And while there are so many, many talented writers out there, it is a, a very strange era to be in and I want to try and bring something different. And this podcast is my best avenue to being me while talking about sport and just having fun with it, giving you workplace stories, talking about how we're not getting into my love life again. But, you know, that thing, that whole area where I'm just a little bit soppy and feely and stuff like the point is that I'm so grateful that you guys have accepted that style of content where I can actually just relax and instead of having to be a Colin Cowherd type figure, can just be to know what, I'm Liam Jenkins. And as a person, I'm sarcastic. I'd like to think I'm quite funny, but you know, that would be egotistical, so I'm not going to say that. But I just have fun. I like kind of making people laugh. I like being lighthearted. I like trying to bring different things to the table and experimenting. And the fact you guys have embraced this podcast is just the most amazing feeling. And to hear that some of you say it's like your favourite show, your favourite Eagles podcast... That is mad. Like, thank you so, so much for making this show a part of your life. I know I've been spamming episodes. It's gone from one a week to two a week. There's been three a week at one point. I'll do whatever it takes. If you guys wanted one episode a day and begged for it, I would do it. Like, I don't care. I want to give you guys the content you want because you give to me so much of your time to listen to this. It's only fair I give you everything I have in return. And just thank you so much for being a part of that. Like I said last episode... There's someone that I know listens to this podcast who knows nothing about American football just because she wants to support me. And that in itself, like, means everything. And you guys are literally the most passionate fan base on this planet. And to know that I've kind of been accepted as part of that and that you would choose this over other podcasts or more well-known podcasts or more reputable sources or whatever, like, just thank you so much for giving this, you know, lame 23-year-old British kid a chance 
it has been the wildest 12 months. I'm going to make a video on YouTube anyway, kind of going through everything. But it has been a wild 12 months for me personally. Um, I've kind of, I feel like I've lost myself and found myself again in, in like, like a personal level. Um, and you guys have been such a big part of almost building that structure behind me and giving me that confidence to try new things again. So, and there's been, yeah, again, a couple of people in particular who have been incredibly instrumental in that. But you guys as a whole, as an audience, have just become this backbone for me. And something I would go to hell and back for. Like, I don't care. Like, if you need content, if you want me to make a certain video or try something new or a certain podcast, like, I'll do whatever I can to make it happen because you've given me so much. And I'm so, so thankful that every single one of you um, take the time to listen to this podcast. So, as a thank you, now I've got that out of my system a little bit. There's still plenty more, don't worry. That's coming in the video. I've written you a little Christmas song and I've rewritten one of the classics, you know, one of the, one of my favourite Christmas songs and I've made it a little Eagles twist. So I'm going to play you out with this song from myself, Liam Jenkins. Have a wonderful Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you spend it with your loved ones. I hope that you get everything you could ever wish for from Santa Claus. I hope that you just have an amazing time with your family, that you can make some memories and that you just have a really nice end to 2018 because you deserve it. So thank you so much for making me a part of your lives, for giving Philly Sports Network this chance. And uh, this is a very special song now. And I'm sure you'll be playing it on repeat and requesting it on iTunes in no time. If that's the case, maybe I'll make it a charity single with all proceeds going to mental health charities. If you want me to do that, just let me know and I'll, I'll make it available on like Bandcamp or something. Um, but without further ado, follow me on Twitter at Liam Jenkins 21. Let me know what you think. Here is the ultimate Eagles Christmas song. It's playoff time. There's no need to be afraid. At playoff time, we target Ocean on a goal line fade. And in our world, of champions, we can spread a smile, joy, throw your arms around, Nick Foles, a play of time, just throw a prayer, throw it to the end zone, at play of time, it's hard, but when you're having fun There's a run straight up the middle And it's a first down for the bird Jordan Matthews scores a touchdown Is it really that absurd? And the Chief Shorts D is soaring Rasul is hitting chimes of doom well tonight, thank God it's those, it's nothing new. And there won't be rings in Jerry World this Christmas time. The greatest gift they'll get this year is a lie. Whoa, where players never grow. No champagne ever flows Do they know what it's like to win at all? He's to you, yes, Captain Cravon He's to them, all the fans in the burning sun Will the Cowboys ever win at all? Run the ball Run the ball Run the ball Let dog know it's playoff time Run the ball 
don't know, it's playoff time and run the ball. I miss Sam Bradford and his sleeves, but run the ball. Let Doug know it's playoff time and run the ball.